Hi, I'm Gina. Today, we're going to be talking about choropleths. So choropleths are a type of map that can be extremely effective for visualizing geospatial data. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to build one in Foundry. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Pounder customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. So here we're going to be using data downloaded from EIA.gov or US Energy Information Administration. And so here, when you see it, you're going to hit download table data as CSV. Then let's go have a look at our data. So here is how the downloaded data looks. You'll see here it has this blank column, and that's going to cause us some problems, so we're just going to get rid of it. So just right-click it and hit Delete column. And now, if you're in Numbers, make sure you export to a CSV and then hit Save, State, Energy, Usage, Records, and then hit Export. Now we're going to go load it into Foundry. So now once you've made your way over to Foundry, you should be in some project that you've already created or that's been created for you in a folder in that project. So here I am in my state choropleth map folder. So you're going to hit new, upload files, choose from your computer, grab that data set that we just downloaded, upload as a structured data set. And now you're going to hit done. So now let's click into it and see how it looks. So here's our data set. It looks pretty good. State is gonna be our primary key. Now note that you could do this exercise even if you have say multiple records for a state, it doesn't really matter as long as you have a good geographic identifier. So now right from here, we're gonna hit all actions, create object type, and you'll see that shortcut led us right to ontology manager. And we're already set to use an existing data source and the data source is already state energy usage records. And now we're gonna hit next. Give this a little map icon. And now we're gonna hit next. Give it a primary key. And then hit next. And then create. Now that we've created our object type, let's go talk about what a choropleth is and what we have to do to make this happen. So here is what a choropleth looks like. And so you can see here that each geography on the map is colored differently depending on some sort of value. Now, in order to make your choropleth, your data is going to have some sort of identifier that Mapbox can work with. Here, under the ontology objects for the map, we're going to see which type of boundary identifier is map support. Now, in order to properly set up your choropleth map, you're going to have to use value types. Now, those value types can come from a marketplace product called choropleth value types. So this assumes that you do have this marketplace product available for you on your stack, but if you don't, I will show you a workaround. Let's go install that marketplace product. So you're gonna navigate to marketplace on your stack. And again, if you don't have access to marketplace or you can't find this product, I'll show you what to do. But if you do have access, you're going to search for Coraplus value types. So here, you're going to see this Choropleth value types product. Let's talk briefly about what a value type is. And so a value type is a semantic wrapper on top of an ontology property that allows you to add context, enforce type safety, and more. Now, in this case, value types are used to better communicate with the map so that it can recognize identifiers as being valid geography identifiers. So if you have this product, you're gonna hit install. Now you're gonna have to install in a namespace and in an ontology because value types are a feature of the ontology. Make sure you permission it appropriately and then you're gonna hit next. So here we can see the content of this product. We have US County FIPS code, country code, country code, so alpha three and two, um, US County ANSI code, more country code, more country code, uh, US state USPS abbreviation and US state FIPS code. And now we're gonna hit next and then next, and then install. And now the installation is beginning, so we're just gonna hang tight while this completes. And now our installation is completed successfully. So now we're gonna hit view installation, 
All right. And we can see that all this has been installed successfully. Now that your marketplace product has installed, let's go see what it did for us in Ontology. So back in Ontology Manager, if I go back to Discover and open up Value Types and click on Value Types, here is where the value types live. Now you'll see here that we have those value types that we just installed right here. So let's look at, for example, US state USPS abbreviation. Now you'll see here that it has a name, a description. Now, most importantly, it has an API name. This API name matters. If the API name is something different, this won't work. You'll also see that it has some constraints. Now, the constraints aren't terribly important for actually making this render on a map. Yes, this does have to be a valid geographic identifier. So in this case, a valid state abbreviation. But what actually makes it render on the map is this API name. So you can make these value types yourself. You don't have to actually get them from Marketplace. What you can do is you can make your own value type with exactly this API name. Let's look at some others. So US state FIPS code. You'll see here, similarly, has a name, has a description, has an API name. You got to follow this convention exactly. Similarly, for US County and C code, we have this one here. Or for country code, alpha 2 or alpha 3, it's going to look like this. And then US state, also a common one, is going to look like this. So if you don't have access to Marketplace or you don't have access to that product, you can still participate by making a value type from scratch just make sure that the API name is exactly correct um, and matches whatever sorts of identifier you're going to use, whether it's state abbreviation or FIPS code. So now that we've explored those value types, let's go connect it to our object type. So you're going to go to Unsafe Changes, click on State Energy Usage Record, and now we're going to go to Properties, click on State, Go to value type, type in USPS, and it's going to be the US state USPS abbreviation value type. And now once you've done that, we're going to hit save and save to ontology and then save changes. And now we're going to wait for this to index and then we're going to be ready to go build our map. Okay, so now the index process is completed, and we can verify that by going to data sources and say we have all green check marks here. Now, we have choices here. We can make our map either in Workshop or in the Maps app. For today, we're just going to use the Maps app. So from here, I'm going to hit Control J and search for Map. Now you're going to click on Map. And now here, we're going to hit Add to Map. Now. Here, we have the object types that we can add to the map. Now you'll see it's actually only showing mappable objects. So meaning only object types that have some sort of property that allow them to be displayed on a map, such as a geo shape or a geo point, or in our case, a property that is associated with a valid value type that designates a geographic identifier. And so for example, if I were to search for an object type that I know I have on this stack, like guest, you'll see it doesn't pop up. And so here, we're going to search for state, and we're going to get state energy use, and we're going to hit add all. Great. And now it's not a terribly interesting map because everything's showing up the same color, so we'll fix it. So here, you're going to click into the layer, go to geometry, and now we're going to click into color. And instead of the property responsible for coloring being the count of objects, because it's one, every state has one row in this data, we're going to use something like consumption per capita million BTU. And we're going to use the mean. doesn't really matter here because, again, one row per state. And so here, um, still doesn't look terribly interesting because right now it's coloring on a scale of 0 to 100. And so instead, we're going to hit infer min max. And now we have a much more interesting looking map. And so here we have proper coloring, especially now that it's inferring the min and the max. And now you have built a Coroplast.
Now, note that this was a simple case because we had just one row per geographic identifier, but the configuration will look exactly the same, even if you had multiple rows per, say, state or multiple rows per county. It wouldn't change your configuration process. And there we have it. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.